This video will be for people looking to get the most value for their dollar. So if you hate spending your money wisely, click away now. As of the last week and a half, it seems like the mining apocalypse has finally died down because graphic card prices are returning to their market sale retail price. Now for a lot of people, that's great news and they're gonna be buying their 1070 Ti's and 1080's that they've been waiting to buy. Some people are even awaiting the new Nvidia cards to come out so they can buy those. However, there are still a lot of people out there where it financially just doesn't make sense for them to spend $450 to $600 plus on a graphics card. Or just straight up don't wanna pay that much. So what can you do? You want nice stuff, but you don't wanna give an arm and a leg for it. Well, this is my solution. If you paid close enough attention to the mining craze, you would have seen that the popular choice for miners was alternate coin mining, which favored Nvidia graphics cards. Thus, the prices and demand for Nvidia graphics cards that had anything more than two gigabytes of VRAM skyrocketed. Now, originally, Radeon cards like the RX 480 and the RX 500 series were the most popular cards and were easily sought out because of the specific coin mining. But like I stated before, that trend started to change once alternate coin mining became more popular. So what happened to these Radeon cards? Well, I didn't see them showing up on Craigslist or on eBay that much, so I assume people continue to mine with them while barely making it worth what it costs to do so and probably attempting to switch over to Nvidia cards at the same time. However, now that the profitability of alternate coin mining is down and mining altogether sucks right now, people are finally selling all of their cards. The best part is, is that the Radeon cards now have to compete with the Nvidia cards on the used market. Now what makes that so great is that Radeon cards have always been cheaper than Nvidia cards. It's what they've always done to make sales and stay competitive with Nvidia. So when an Nvidia card has been used and used for mining, the price that it can sell for in the used market is gonna drop significantly. And as a result, forcing the Radeon prices to come down as well. Otherwise, the people selling those Radeon cards won't sell them at all because people are just gonna opt for the Nvidia cards. So what does all this mean? It means if you wanna pick up a high tier gaming card for your rig, get a Radeon card. They're cheap as hell right now. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, yeah, I mean, I wanna save money as much as the next guy, but I don't know if I wanna buy a graphics card that's been trashed in a mining rig. Well, allow me to clear up that misconception. Number one, miners take care of their cards. It's their income. Well, at least it was. They use these cards with specific settings to make sure they last as long as possible while still maintaining profitability. Number two, I actually bought an RX 570 eight gigabyte card and I'm gonna show you the benchmarks when I compare it to my brand new 1070 Ti. Now the 1070 Ti I bought last month for $550. The RX 570 I got off Craigslist from a miner for $215. The math ends up being that the 1070 Ti costs 61% more than the RX 570. So basically, if the 1070 Ti doesn't perform 61% better than the 570, that makes the 570 a better deal. So without further ado, let's go through some of these benchmarks. First thing to note is that both of these cards were tested in my own personal system with an i5-8600K overclocked to four gigahertz and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM clocked in at 2400 megahertz. Both cards were not overclocked while testing. The first game we're looking at is Fallout 4. On ultra settings, the 1070 Ti got 75 FPS on average, while the 570 got 38 FPS on average. Now this might seem like a massive drop. It's approximately 50%. However, like we discussed before, if the 1070 Ti isn't performing 61% better, the RX 570 is still a better deal. It gets a little bit closer when we take a look at the next game, which is PUBG. Both cards tested at ultra settings again. The 1070 Ti got a 62 frames per second average, while the RX 570 got a 42 frames per second average. At League of Legends on the highest settings, the 1070 Ti got 205 FPS on average, and the RX 570 got 195 FPS on average. For CSGO at the highest settings, the 1070 Ti got 244 FPS on average, while the 570 got 159 FPS on average. And finally, the last benchmark for this video, the 1070 Ti on ultra settings for Unigen Heaven got 105 FPS on average, while the 570 got 82 FPS on average. So the next thing we're gonna do is take the average of the FPS scores for both cards and see where the cards perform on an average basis throughout these five games. I know that these five games are specific to my test and that you can get different results varying on what games you choose. I chose to go with popular games. 
Side note, I didn't benchmark Fortnite because for whatever reason, the servers were offline for me all of yesterday while I was making the video. On average, the 1070 Ti got 138.2 FPS across all five games. The 570 got an FPS average of 103.2 FPS on average of all five games. So if we do the math, what does this mean? Well, right off the bat, it means that the 1070 Ti on average actually only performed 25.5% better than the 570. However, like I stated before though, unless the 1070 Ti was performing 61% better than the RX 570, financially, the 570 turned out to just be a better deal overall. In this scenario, if you choose the 1070 Ti over the RX 570, you're actually getting a 34% worse deal. 34%, that means you are spending a third of your money poorly. I don't know about you, but when I'm buying things, I don't exactly feel comfortable wasting a third of my purchase. And I haven't even taken into account the free additional performance you could get out of the 570 if you choose to overclock it. Now, obviously you have to take into account the warranty you would receive if you choose to buy the new card, because that extra 34% of your money might be worth the peace of mind to you. However, I've been testing the 570 outside the benchmarks I just shared with you, as well as with some of my editing software, and it is continuing to show that it delivers results and does not break down no matter what I'm throwing at it so far. Based off of everything I've seen, the used card market for Radeon cards is the best financial decision right now. Now you might be asking, where do I find these cards and how do I get these deals? Well, I've said this on my channel before, but Craigslist is probably your best bet for finding a good deal on graphics cards. In almost every scenario, it's impossible to beat local deals. But something else you should check out that I've heard about is a website called Chipit. Chipit is basically an online marketplace used specifically for buying and selling used PC hardware. Instead of going on eBay and filtering through a thousand listings that might not be relevant to your search, Chipit has a very simple and effective search filtering process where you can find what you're looking for really easily. The cool thing about it is both buyers and sellers are protected. If the money doesn't come through on one person's end or if the part doesn't come through on another person's end, they are compensated financially for the poor deal. However, I haven't had a bad experience on the website so far, so definitely check it out if you're looking to buy used PC parts or even if you're looking to sell what you have lying around. Anyways, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this comparison and hopefully this video and information saves somebody some extra money out there. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below or reach out to me on my Discord. And as always, have a good day.